Lidus is a village in the Czech Republic just northwest of Prague. It is built near the site of the previous village of the same name which, as part of the Nazi protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia, on orders from Adolf Hitler and Reich for one quarter rare SS Heinrich Himmler, was completely destroyed by German forces in reprisal for the assassination, in Operation Anthropoid, of Reich protector Reinhard Heydrich in the late spring of 1942. On June 10, 1942, all 173 men over 15 years of age from the village were executed. Another 11 men who were not in the village were arrested and executed soon afterwards, along with several others already under arrest. Meanwhile, 184 women and 88 children were deported to concentration camps. A few children considered racially suitable for Germanization were handed over to SS families and the rest were sent to the Chamno extermination camp where they were gassed to death. After the war ended, only 153 women and 17 children returned. History The village is first mentioned in writing in 1318. After the industrialization of the area, many of its people worked in mines and factories in the neighboring cities of Kladno and Slina one half. Heydrich's assassination. From September 24, 1941, SS Obergruppen Far One Quarter Air and General of Police Reinhard Heydrich had been acting Reich's protector of the Nazi protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia. This area of the former Czechoslovakia had been occupied by Nazi Germany since April 5, 1939. On the morning of May 27, 1942, Heydrich was being driven from his country villa at Pernenska Copyright Bar and registered trademark A three quarters any to his office at Prague Castle. When he reached a Kobelizi area of Prague, his car was attacked by the Slovak and Czech soldiers Jotsv Garba A.K. and Jan Kibia. These men, who had been part of a team trained in Great Britain, parachuted into Bohemia in December 1941 as part of Operation Anthropoid. After Garba A.K.'s den gun jammed, Heydrich ordered his driver, SS Obischar for one quarter rare Klein, to stop the car. When Heydrich stood up to shoot Garba AK, Kibia threw a modified anti-tank grenade at Heydrich's car. The explosion wounded Heydrich and Kibia. Heydrich sent his driver, Klein, to chase Garba AK on foot. In the ensuing firefight, Garba AK shot Klein in the leg, below the knee. Both Kibia and Garba AK managed to escape the scene. On June 4 Heydrich died in Belova Hospital in Prague from septicemia caused by pieces of upholstery entering his body when the bomb exploded. Late in the afternoon of May 27, SS Group N Far One Quarter Rare Karl Hermann Frank proclaimed a state of emergency and a curfew in Prague. Anyone who helped the attackers was to be executed along with their entire family. A massive search involving 21,000 men began. A total of 36,000 houses were checked. By June 4, 157 people had been executed as a result of the reprisals, but the assassins had not been found and no information was forthcoming. The morning speeches at Heydrich's funeral in Berlin were not yet over, when on June 9, the decision was made to make up for his death. Karl Hermann Frank Secretary of State for the Nazi Protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia, reported from Berlin that the Far One Quarter Rare had commanded the following concerning any village found to have harbored Heydrich's killers, execute all adult men, transport all women to a concentration camp, gather the children suitable for Germanization, then place them in SS families in the Reich and bring the rest of the children up in other ways, burn down the village and level it entirely. Massacre, Horst Bar Paragraph Hum the SIPO chief for the protectorate Bohemia and Moravia, immediately acted on the orders. Members of the Ordnungspolze and SD surrounded the village of Lidus, blocking all avenues of escape. The Nazi regime chose this village because its residents were suspected of harboring local resistance partisans and were falsely associated with aiding Operation Anthropo team members. All men of the village were rounded up and taken to the farm of the Horake family on the edge of the village. Mattresses were taken from neighboring houses where they were stood up against the wall of the Hora K.S. barn. The shooting of the men commenced at about 7.00 a.m. At first the men were shot in groups of five, but Bar Paragraph Hum thought the executions were proceeding too slowly and ordered that ten men be shot at a time. The dead were left lying where they fell. 
This continued until the afternoon hours when there were 173 dead. Another 11 men who were not in the village that day were arrested and murdered soon afterwards as were 8 men and 7 women already under arrest because they had relations serving with the Czech army in exile in the United Kingdom. A total of 203 women and 105 children were first taken to Lydis village school. They were then taken to the nearby town of Kladno and detained in the grammar school for three days. The children were separated from their mothers. Four women were pregnant and were sent to the same hospital where Heydrich died. They were forced to undergo abortions and then sent to different concentration camps. On June 12, 1942, 184 women of Lydis were loaded on trucks, driven to Kladno railway station and forced into a special passenger train guarded by an escort. On the morning of June 14, 1942, the train halted on a railway siding at the concentration camp at Ravenspell 1 quarter CK. On their arrival the Lydis women were first isolated in a special block. The women were forced to work in leather processing, road building, textile and ammunition factories. Eighty-eight Lydis children were transported to the area of the former textile factory in Lisenor Street in Angstroma Cube Dar. Their arrival was announced by a telegram from Horst Bar Paragraph Homes Prague office which ended with, the children are only bringing what they wear. No special care is desirable. The care was minimal. They suffered from a lack of hygiene and from illnesses. By order of the camp management, no medical care was given to the children. Shortly after their arrival in Angstrom a cube da, officials from the Central Race and Settlement Branch chose seven children for Germanization. The few children considered racially suitable for Germanization were handed over to SS families. The furore over Lydis caused some hesitation over the fate of the remaining children. However, in late June Adolf Eichmann ordered the massacre of the remainder of the children. On July 2, 1942, all of the remaining 81 Lydis children were handed over to the Angstrom Cube da Gestapo office, who in turn had them transported to the extermination camp at Chemno 70 kilometers away, where they were gassed to death in Majiris gas vans. Out of the 105 Lydis children, 82 died in Chamno, 6 died in the German Lebensborn orphanages and 17 returned home. The village of Lydis was set on fire and the remains of the buildings destroyed with explosives. Even those buried in the town cemetery were not spared. Their remains were dug up and destroyed. A film was made of the entire process by Franz Trumm. A collaborator with German intelligence, Trumm had run a Zeiz icon shop in Lucerna Palace in Prague. After the Nazi occupation he became a filming advisor for the Nazi party. Altogether, about 340 people from Lydis died because of the German reprisal. Only 153 women and 17 children returned after the war. All the animals in the Villagia Euro pets and beasts of Bodina Euro were slaughtered as well. The small Czech village of Lee three quarters of KY was also destroyed two weeks after Lydis. Gestapo agents found a radio transmitter there of an underground team who parachuted in with Kebia and Garba AK. There both men and women of the village were shot, and the children were sent to concentration camps or arianized. The death toll resulting from the effort to avenge the death of Heydrich is estimated at over 1,300. This count includes relatives of the partisans, their supporters, Czech elites suspected of disloyalty and random victims like those from Lydis. Nazi propaganda had openly, and proudly, announced the events in Lydis, and like other massacres in occupied Europe which were kept secret. The information was instantly picked up by Allied media. Commemorations in September 1942, coal miners in Stoke-on-Trent, Staffordshire in Great Britain led by Sir Barnett Stross MP founded the organisation Lydis Shall Live to raise funds for the rebuilding of the village after the war. Soon after the raising of the village, several towns in various countries were named after it, so that the name would live on in spite of Hitler's intentions. A neighbourhood in Crest Hill, Illinois, was renamed from Stern Park to Lydis. A square inch the English city of Coventry, itself devastated by Luftwaffe bombing during World War II, is named after Lydis. An alley in a very crowded area of downtown Santiago, Chile is named after the town of Lydis too, and one of the buildings there has a small plaque that explains its tragic story. 
a street in Sofia, Bulgaria is named to commemorate the massacre. The Lydis Memorial in Phillips, Wisconsin was built in memory of the village. In the wake of the massacre, Humphrey Jennings directed a film about Lydis, the silent village, using amateur actors from a Welsh mining village, Kngid, near the small South Wales town of Eistrad Gynlay. An American film was made in 1943 called Hitler's Madman. However, it contained a number of inaccuracies in the story. A more accurate British film, Operation Daybreak, starring Timothy Bottoms as Kibia, Martin Shaw as Annie Abda and Anthony Andrews as Garbo A.K., was released in 1975. American poet Edna St. Vincent Millay wrote a book-length first play on the massacre, The Murder of Lydis, which was printed in its entirety in the 19th October 1942, edition of Life magazine and published as a book that same year by Harper. Czech composer Bohuslav Martina composed his memorial to Lydis in 1943 as a response to the massacre. The piece quotes from the Czech Saint Wenceslas Chorale, as well as, in the climax of the piece, the opening notes of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. In 2013, Lydis, A Light Across the Sea, a documentary film project featuring the story of Lydis and its link to Stoke-on-Trent was made by Staffordshire firm Inspired Film and Video, and featured original compositions by music students at Keele University. Lydis since 1945. Women from Lydis who survived imprisonment at Ravenspell 1 quarter CK returned after the Second World War. They were rehoused in a new village of Lydis that was built overlooking the original site. The first part of the new village was completed in 1949. Two men from Lydis were in the United Kingdom serving in the Royal Air Force at the time of the massacre. After 1945 pilot officer Joseph Horake and flight lieutenant Joseph Station unregistered trademark Abner one half returned to Czechoslovakia to serve in the Czechoslovak Air Force. However, after the Czechoslovak coup d'état copyright tat of 1948 the new communist government would not allow them to apply to be housed in the new Lydis because they had served in the forces of one of the Western powers. Horake and his family returned to Britain in the RAF. He died in a flying accident in December 1948. A sculpture from the 1990s by Maria Kitilova stands today overlooking the site of the old village of Lydis. Entitled The Memorial to the Children Victims of the War it comprises 82 bronze statues of children aged 1 to 16 to honor the children who were murdered at Chamno in the summer of 1942. A cross with a crown of thorns marks the mass grave of the Lydis men. Overlooking the site is a memorial area flanked by a museum and a small exhibition hall. The memorial area is linked to the new village by an avenue of linden trees. In 1955 a rosarium of 29,000 rose bushes was created beside the avenue of lindens overlooking the side of the old village. In the 1990s the rosarium was neglected, but after 2001 a new rosarium with 21,000 bushes was designed and created. Situated 500 meters from the museum, in the new village, is an art gallery which displays permanent and temporary exhibitions. The annual children's art competition attracts entries worldwide. International relations. Twin towns are Euro sister cities, Lydis is twinned with, Coventry, United Kingdom, see also. Lydis Memorial, Car Three Quarters Arc, Oradour Saw Glen, Catin Massacre, Mart Saboto Massacre. Putten Raid, Lou Kenton, Palmary, Site of German Mass Murders of Jews, Polish Intelligentsia, Politicians and Athletes, Killed During the AB Action, Sunday Action Krakow, Planned Destruction of Warsaw, German War Crimes, Reprisal, Collective Punishment, References. Books, Gerworth, Robert. Hitler's Hangman, The Life of Heydrich. New Haven, Connecticut, Yale University Press. ISBN A 978 0 300 8 Jan Kaplan and Christina Nozarzewska, Prague, The Turbulent Century, Kenemann Verlag Zelschaft MBH, Kulm, ISBN 3 89508 528 6, Joan M. Wolf, Someone Named Eva 2007. ISBN 0-618-53579-9, Duard Schieler K., Lydis, 
The Story of a Czech Village 2004. ISBN 80 86758 14 1. Zena Irma Trinka, A Little Village Called Lidis, Story of the Return of the Women and Children of Lidis. International Book Publishers, Western Office, Lidgewood, North Dakota, 1947. Maureen Myant, The Search. Alma Books, 2010. ISBN 978-1-84688-103-9, Williams, Max. Reinhard Heydrich, The Biography, Volume 2 A Euro Enigma. Church Stretton, Ulrich Publishing. ISBN A 978-0-9537577-6-3A, Williamson, Gordon. Loyalty is My Honor. Motor Books International. ISBN A 0-7603-0012-7A, External Links, Hitler's Madman at the Internet Movie Database A Euro A fictionalized account of the death of Reinhard Heydrich and the reprisal against Lyside. The Silent Village at the Internet Movie Database A Euro The true story of the massacre of a small Czech village by the Nazis is retold as if it happened in Wales. Alan Heath, The Fate of the Children of Lydis on YouTube, English, Lydis Memorial, Czech, Official Website of Municipality, Czech, Recent Search for Missing Children, Czech, Photo Series about Destruction of Lydis by Reichsabitsdienst, Czech, Lydis Film Official Website, Directed by P.E.T. Nikola, the first ever Czech made feature film about the destruction of Lydis.